this stage, I'm really just looking for steps four and five. Anything that's a middle tone, I'm leaving the tone of the paper. And then there are some areas here where I'm getting a, a lot darker, that's kind of like a five, um, where the brow gets a little darker here. And then there's areas that I'm just kind of leaving a step four where the, this pocket of the eye just kind of rolls into shadow. So one thing that you wanna do, you want to keep your pencil sharp. A lot of times I suggest if you can get a pencil sharpener that's like battery powered, a lot of times you can find them at Staples or Office Depot, Office Max. They'll have little battery powered ones for like nine bucks and those are great because if you can just have it near you, you don't have to keep getting up, you don't have to kind of ruin the process of having to get up and constantly sharpen your pencil. And the cool thing about if you have your pencil really sharp, there are times where you can kind of use the side of it to shade in smoothly. But again, there's a tooth to the paper, so when you shade that way, it's a little bit grainier. But now I can go in with my pencil a little bit more sharply, and I can kind of fill in the tooth of the paper, and I can start to get areas a little bit darker where they need to be. So I can really define, for example, this edge and this edge over here, I can really kind of define where that upper eyelid meets the brow that protrudes and I can get that darkness in there really nice. Nice cast shadow under the nose. Again, one of the things that's really helping this from the get-go, I mean, I like to think this is because I know how to draw and I like to think it's because I'm really good. You know, hopefully that has something to do with it. A huge proponent to how this is looking is the reference itself and it's really good lighting to start with. And the fact that I've got good lighting to start with, that's, that's just gonna make my job that much easier to make this drawing look really cool. Now she's got really light hair, so I wanna be careful not to go too dark in places, but there are some areas where her hair goes back into shadow. You know, a lot of times you wanna draw this as best you can. Sometimes I just get a little more stylized with things and I just start doing like random line work. This is just something in time, you just start developing more of a style. But a lot of times what the aim is, right off the bat, you're obviously trying to make things photographic or you're trying to capture a likeness. In some cases, it's better to shade lighter at first. You can always go back and kind of beef up contrast if you need to. And you'll notice when you start putting in the highlights, you know, you're gonna be going back and forth, kind of chiseling things out. So sometimes it's safer to just do a little bit at first and then you may need to go back later and really chisel out some of those edges. But right now I'm putting in what's called the core shadow. So it's kind of as the light is wrapping around this figure, it's the form shadow, so it's gonna roll in softly. The core shadow is kind of the darkest part of that. So you can kind of see this cheekbone here, it rolls softly into shadow, but then there's this darkest part. There's a little bit of rim lighting coming in, a little bit of soft light that's kind of bouncing into that shadow. So the, dar the darkest part is kind of what I'm focusing on right now, and that is the core shadow. But the rest of this is in shadow, even though we focus on that it's almost like a little bit of a rim lighting or a little bit of reflective light, but that reflective light is still in shadow. It's still darker. We just, when we zero in on it, it seems like it's a lot lighter than it really is. Shading on the neck is getting a little grainy, so one thing I can do to help that is make sure my pencil is sharp and I can go in and I can really kind of get some of those darks in there because you don't want it to look like a crayon. You don't want it to be grainy like that where it just has that crayon look. I mean, essentially color pencils are crayons. They're super waxy, but you don't want them to have that look. So if you can get them nice and sharp, they it'll, it's kind of the opposite of crayons. Crayons are usually dull and you can really see the tooth of the paper the way you shade with them, so you want to try to alleviate that. Here's one of the reasons I like to draw this way. I like to draw with my black color pencil first. It doesn't mean I'm done with the black color pencil, I'm never gonna pick it up again, but for the most part, I've drawn this as good as I can. So even before using the white color pencil, I feel like 
this is actually looking pretty good. This is looking pretty decent. It looks like her, it's already a good drawing. But now I'm going to take my white color pencil. I'm gonna sharpen it. Now is the really fun part. This is the icing on the cake because now I'm gonna add in all the highlights and watch how three-dimensional this really starts to pop out. It just really takes the dimension of depth to another level. Check this out. So I'm gonna start with this eye over here and I'm gonna add in, yeah, I've got this highlight here. There's actually a highlight on that upper eyelid here. Now I wanna be careful with the whites of the eyes. I actually do see a nice little strong highlight on that lower lid right here but I wanna be careful not to go too crazy with the whites of the eyes because if I go too harsh with that white, it's gonna look like there's a light bulb inside her head. Now I do see a little bit of light here, but I just wanna go soft because it's not really that sharp. There's a little more on this side, but again, I don't wanna go too crazy with it or it's gonna look like there's a light bulb inside her head. I wanna avoid that. There's maybe a little bit of highlight above her brow right here, just a little bit softer on the forehead, not a lot. There is some highlight right on the other side of the tear duct here. And then under her eye, kind of above the cheekbone, under the eyelid here, there's just this nice highlight area I'm gonna shade in nice and soft. So that's kind of the beauty of these color pencils. When you're working with charcoal, there's kind of the linear technique, and then there's where you're drawing with line, and then there's more of a tonal technique where you're focusing a little bit more on shading, but it's kind of hard to do both all the time. The cool thing about working with these color pencils on your tone paper, it really is the best of both worlds where you are drawing linear with your sharp color pencils, but you also have the ability to do shading and to put in highlight. And it really just makes your drawings stand out. I find a lot of artists or a lot of students feel that they have just a lot more control from their color pencil and check out how rendered that eye is compared to this eye. You see that where there's just so much more depth, there's so much more contrast. We've got this awesome little highlight right here, nice little hot spot. Again, we've got the highlight kind of right above on this upper eyelid, but we wanna be careful, less is more. There's a couple of gleaming highlights right under lower eyelid and then we want to be careful really soft gets a little bit lighter here and then barely because if you look here the white of the eye right there it's not absolute white that eye is kind of rolling into shadow i'm afraid to even touch it but maybe just a little bit and then that's it that's almost too much let it go people will look at it they'll know it's the white of the eye but if you just cram in this white color pencil it's like laser eyes and the whites of the eyes just stand out way too much <laughs> yeah pew pew you just gotta like relax on that okay and you know some artists will get really soft and they'll just really get into the rendering which is awesome some artists will get a little more stylized sometimes i'll get more stylized where i'm almost doing like cross hatching and line work so from a distance you can really see the tonal changes with the areas of the skin tones but when you look close it's just like a bunch of chicken scratch lines one of the things that's really going to help kind of determine the planes of the face if you look at the upper mouth here right under the nose and right above the mouth, there's like this triangle of light. There's also light right above the upper lip and right under the shadow right here. Now, right now you can kind of see that, but without those highlights in there, it's just not as defined. Watch what happens when I go ahead and add in this light here, really defining the shape of the nose, the shape of the shadow. There's like this highlight right above this upper lip and it's defined here and it just kind of rolls into this highlight above the upper mouth. There's a little bit under the lip right there. And it gets just a little bit brighter right up towards the nose there. Check that out that totally defines that upper shape of the mouth and it really makes it look like 
it's protruding a little bit. Now that I see that, I actually need to make this a little bit stronger on the nose here. Again, that's part of the process. You're gonna be going back and forth, really kind of playing tones against each other. Now this needs to go a little bit brighter up in here. There's a little bit of highlight coming in on the side of under the cheekbone here. That's really helping to make that stand out. One of the things I wanna be careful of though, I don't want to cross streams. I don't want to cross my black and white color pencil. If there's any area that transitions shading from light to dark or dark to light, I want to do it this way, not this way. So I need to kind of plan for that as I'm drawing things out with my dark color pencil, not to draw into territory that is going to get lighter. The lips, I can add these nice juicy highlights, draw these really cool shapes on the lips and check out how adding these highlights with white color pencil, instant lips. Now she's got really nice glossy lips. That looks super, super cool. And again, the trick to it, uh, I talk in a lot of the other videos about drawing things random. You need to check out that video for drawing the female head where I focus on drawing the lips. When you're drawing those little highlights, if you draw each highlight the same little shape square, it almost looks like these little teeth come through and are on the lips. You need it to be random so when people look at it, they don't see little white teeth, they see highlights that are just randomly kind of going across the texture of the lips. I need to be careful with this cheek over here. There also is highlight on this cheek, but I can tell that the light is coming this way. So do you see how the light on this cheekbone is lighter than the light on this cheekbone? I still need to make this cheekbone a little bit lighter in my drawing, but I need to be careful it's not as light as this side. I still need to make it look like the light is coming from an angle here. So when I put in the highlight on this side, I need to be mindful of that and I need to not go crazy with the highlight. Get it in nice and soft. I wanna be careful with the hair. I don't wanna to go too, it is very light, but some of it just kind of falls into a medium area. So I wanna really pick and choose where are the bright highlights and where is it just a little bit of highlight. There's a really nice strong highlight kind of running across the front here. There is such a thing as overdoing it for sure. So I talked about not doing laser eyes. You also don't wanna do laser teeth. Now I know she's got white teeth and I can actually see her teeth here, but do you see how her teeth are in shadow? Her teeth are not as bright as say the white highlights on the lips. So in fact, her teeth are about a middle ground there. I'm not even gonna add any white color pencil in the teeth. If I add white to them, they're just gonna be too bright for how tucked back they are in shadow under her lips. You're not doing it any favors by adding stronger highlights where there aren't stronger highlights. You're gonna make it look like laser teeth and then your drawing isn't gonna look as realistic. You need to not draw what you know. You know she's got white teeth. You need to draw what you see. You need to be careful. I also don't want the black and white color pencils to crisscross really anywhere, but not in the hair, because then you're gonna get that weird gray. So right now I'm getting a little stylized with my cross hatching. Um, again, you can go and you can really take the time to kind of shade this out so that it's less chalky the more you sharpen your pencil, the more you'll be able to really go in and kind of get those awesome highlights. So a couple things that I want to point out is I see some areas already now where I want to go darker. So I can go back and forth, back and forth. I see some areas here in the hair. Okay, I want to chisel this out a little darker. I want to go a little bit darker here. And once I add in these darks, I'm probably going to see areas where then I need to add in more highlight. And you're kind of pushing and pulling, kind of going back and forth, back and forth every step of the way, which is great. It's a really fun process. And I find a lot of students feel that they, oh, I almost forgot to add highlight on the chin here. Again, you're going back and forth. I didn't even notice that until I switched back to the black color pencil. So here we go, adding in a uh, highlight into the chin area. Oh, that looks so much better. Look at that. I mean, look at it. Would you just, would you look at that? Oh, would y'all look, look at, at this? Huh, I wish the police officer was here right now. I'd really like to look at him. <laughs> 
a little bit, not much, but it just gets a little bit lighter under the lip over there, and just a little bit lighter on this side of the shadow. Not a whole lot, a little bit. Oh, now we're talking. That's what it was missing. It needed just a little bit of that. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. What? A couple things I wanted to point out. One is that I talked in the video about the three secrets of illustration. One of them was composition and the idea that whatever image you have that you're drawing, whether it's something out of your head or even if you have something where you have a photographic reference. For this demo, I decided I found this reference that I felt had really good lighting. I don't even know who this is. It's from uh, an old issue of Maxim magazine that I had from years back, but it had really good lighting. So I knew I was going to be drawing this for the demo. Now, in addition to drawing kind of exactly what, what is here in the photo, I had to ask myself when I started drawing this out, is there anything I can do creatively, design-wise, to make an interesting composition. So what I thought was interesting, instead of just drawing this exactly head-on like so, I thought it was more interesting to have her tilting back a little bit. So I'm drawing exactly the reference that I have here, but instead of drawing it head-on, I didn't draw the phone on the wall, and I've got her tilting back just a little bit. See how interesting that is? So again, that's kind of one of your jobs as an artist. What can you do? What can you find? Not to knock the photographer, like they didn't think to turn you know, their camera that way, but you've got this edge where you can take something, in this case, already a great photograph that a photographer took. What can you do? What can you put your spin on it to creatively change the design a little bit? Is there something you can do to make it even better? Can you crop it in a certain way and zero in on something or pull back even further? Or uh, again, just change the orientation somehow. Something that you can do to kind of make it your own, put your own spin on it. And in addition to really cool rendering, really good contrast and edge control, is there something else you can do composition wise? So I feel like I've kind of done something new. There's a new spin on it and it has, it almost feels completely different. This one, I don't know if you would say this one's a little bit more alluring with her pose, kind of reclining back a little bit more like that. All right, you know what? I need to add a little bit more highlight in the uh, skin tones kind of coming in here. So this is how it works. There's one more cool thing that I'll show you. A lot of times what you're trying to do, and I know I talked about this with some of my charcoal demos, a lot of what you're trying to do is you're trying to put darks against lights and lights against darks. So one of the things that we can do here is maximize dark edges with a lighter area in the background and lighter areas with a darker area in the background. If we look at this overall lighting right here, I can kind of see the light is coming this way. So it's putting more shadows kind of on this side of the face. That means if I am going to have any kind of tonal atmosphere in the background, making it lighter is going to make her pop out a little bit more. Similarly, because the light is coming at an angle like this, this side of her hair and the ear is relatively light. Having a little bit of darkness on this side would probably help over here. So let's put that to the test and see what happens. For one, I could add like a rim light. So that's kind of cool. But now let's go ahead and have kind of a nice soft light just kind of fading away and can you see how already that's kind of making this side of the head stand out a little bit putting your lights against darks and your darks against lights that already really helps this side of the head and it just adds like a really nice atmosphere to it you see this in real life you see this happen in nature so when we do studies of like landscapes and trees you kind of naturally see these light and shadows happening sometimes there is no better reference than nature and then bringing it lighter and lighter as we get closer to the head especially to these shadow areas we can really kind of pop that light and it just distinctly really pushes the shape of the ear and this this earring here just looks awesome and it's contrast it's beautiful it's it's the idea again those three secrets of illustration we've got the composition rocking it's like a really cool composition we've got our contrast so we've got really dark darts we've got really light lights we've got a good you know balance of everything in between but the other thing that we have that is really really great about this monotone illustration we have 
our hard edges and we have our soft edges. And the hard edges, our eyes are drawn to and we kind of zero in on detail with the hard edges, but the soft edges are nice because they're areas that kind of give our eyes a rest and they're equally as important to balance out those hard edges. You see soft edges in the cheekbones. So there's hard edges and soft edges everywhere, so that is helping out big time. Real quick, I talked about adding in a harder edge kind of around where the light is, so I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm just gonna kind of shade in around some of those areas that are lighter and that's going to make her pop out even more because I'm putting darks against lights. It's looking pretty good. Now I'm just going to get a little bit darker as I get closer. All right, that is looking pretty cool. And hopefully you agree that putting the light against the dark and the dark against the light really kind of helps balance it out. There's one more thing that I want to say that you want to really try to be careful of and something that I think is really going to help with your monotone illustration. I mentioned it a little bit earlier. You want to draw what you see, not what you know. So as an example, when you draw someone's nose, you don't want to just draw around the nose with this dark line like this and this dark line like this. If you don't see a dark line there, a lot of times it's going to be edges. So what you're going to notice is, I'm just going to make up a nose here, you're going to notice that it kind of rolls under the nose like that, rolls under like that. There may be more of like a cast shadow. There may be a darker area where the nostril is, something like that. And then what happens a lot of times, you'll have like a highlight here, maybe a little bit of a highlight here, and then maybe, you know, something like that for the nose. But then a lot of times what happens, you won't actually see a line like this around the nose. What you'll see is there'll be kind of an edge where it gets lighter on the cheek, and it's almost something like that. So it's almost like you can see the edge of the nose, but you don't want to draw a line around that because there's no black line. As soon as you draw that black line, it's like someone took a color pencil and actually drew a line around the nose like that, even though that line isn't there. So you want to be really careful about where you're putting in. You want to think of it more edges, not a hard line, but a hard edge. Can you see where this hard edge of white and where the highlight is on the cheek right here, it really kind of shows the edge of the nose without me actually drawing it in. You wanna draw what you see, not what you know. I'll give you another example. When people draw lips, they go in and they just draw the, this hard outline and then they draw the lips like this, but no one has an actual hard outline around their lips. Now, a lot of times, because light is coming from above, that upper lip is gonna be in shadow. So yes, just like I drew here, you can see that upper lip is darker, but I didn't take my pencil and carve this really dark outline around there, because as soon as you do that, it starts to look like a cartoon. You don't want the cartoon. You want to think of it as shapes of light and shapes of dark or shapes of the tone of the paper. You want to draw what you see, not what you know. Cool beans? All right, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys do for your monotone illustrations. Did you enjoy class today? If so, give me a like. If there's something you'd like to see me cover in a future video, let me know what that is in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I've also got a video series called Sketchbook Challenge that helps your drawing, creativity, and fill up an awesome looking sketchbook. Plus, there are videos on You Can Draw Star Wars, Hollywood is Dead, and sneak peeks at the Aladdin 3477 Motion Picture Trilogy. In order to not miss any new videos, hit that notification bell. Sharing is caring, and it's great to inspire your friends. Share this video on social media, and your friends will share awesome art tips they find with you. If you're on Instagram, you can follow me at Matt underscore Bush underscore Instagram. I'll see you back in the classroom soon. Don't be tardy.